Strategic Hot Box with Dr. Brandy Love Stankovic. Discussing leadership, business, and how to take control of your life and achieve greatness. From the streets of Las Vegas, energized, informed, and never diluted. It's time to kick some ass. Yo, welcome back to the Strategic Hot Box. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> they're making fun of me. Yo, welcome back to the Strategic Hot Box. It's your girl, Dr. Brandy Stankovic, and I'm happy that you're here. Today, we're going to talk about travel, and we're going to talk about the importance of travel, and in getting lost, you really can find yourself. So let's dig right in. We have a pretty amazing subject matter expert, Mr. Mario Vega, that's going to be joining us here very, very soon. And as you know, for anybody that has been our hotbox homie for a long time, we break it down to learn the love and the kick ass. In the learn, we'll talk about travel, talk about the importance, dig into the topic, introduce it in the love section that I'd like to introduce you to somebody that I absolutely love and who loves and has a passion for travel. And then in kick ass, we'll give you some things that you can start implementing today day. So let's do it. When it comes to getting lost, when it comes to travel, it really is an opportunity to broaden the mind. And as you know, way back in the day, uh, we talked to, to Doug Chambers about travel and we talked about opening your eyes and keeping a journal and sharing experiences. And so why talk about travel again? Is there more? Yes, there's so much more when it comes to travel. And as I've mentioned, uh, I travel a lot. When I talk to different people, they're like, I travel for work all the time, like once a month for travel at least. I'm like, once a month? Try every week. And I travel probably three or four days a week, every week. And is it difficult sometimes? Sure. Is it uh, absolutely to the core of who I am? Yes. And would I completely internally combust if I had to be in uh, the same office or the same cubicle every single day? Yes, I would. And so it may, it just makes sense for me to be able to be in the field with clients, with people, with you having different conversations. And so I, I work that way. And and, and through my travels, I certainly have learned a lot about myself. And play, travel and play sometimes are difficult, and travel and play sometimes work really well together. And in through travel, I've become probably the most disciplined I've ever been in my life about certain aspects uh, and and when I can do things and when I can't. And our good friend, uh, Toby Kennedy, shout out to Toby if you're listening to this one, you're going to love this. He loves to uh, give me a hard time and hassle me because I will never drink at uh, airports and I won't drink before I get on airplanes. And unless it's like a 20 hour flight or something, then geez, I mean, you might as well, cause you're going to be on it for days, but, uh, but I don't. And, and part of that is just the way that it makes you feel and, and the process of the airplane and the fact that I'm on them all the time. I know what my body's like and all of that. So I just don't, it's just a, it's a hard line for me. And so he loves to hassle me, but I know a lot of people have, you know, different experiences with airplanes, but, but travel really does create this certain amount of discipline. It's also important to make sure that we open our eyes in, in the process of travel and life and, and be, in the place, absorb the moments, experience it and live it. And I may have shared it in the podcast with Doug. One of the most powerful things that I love to do when I go different places is blend in. I love to not be known and noticed for being somebody that's an outsider, because that means that I'm experiencing absorbing the culture the best that I can and getting to know the people um, the best that I can. And so, you know, you, you can get lost in a lot of different ways. You can get lost in a book. You can get lost in a good tequila conversation at 2 a.m. <laughs> Not that I've ever done that. Uh, you can get lost in a in 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 anything. You can you know. But one of the best ways to get lost is is in travel and allowing you to discover more of yourself. And when you're stepping out of your comfort zone, because really traveling, especially outside of the country, um, allows you to fully immerse in in something that is so so different. Even in Western cultures, even when you travel to Canada or to to Australia, if you're from the United States, when you're traveling to countries that are close, or if you're from other places in the world and you're traveling to countries that are relatively geographically close to you, there may be some cultural similarities. However, some countries, um, you're you're pretty very geographically close to a culture that might be very, very different too. And that's, that's a benefit that you might have to not go far, but to be able to experience kind of a, a broadened uh, distance in culture. So I want to share an experience that I had in Brazil. And I went, uh, studied abroad in Brazil 
you know, a, a number of years ago now, but it was in, in grad school. And we were working with TV Globo and uh, down in Rio de Janeiro. And, I, and one of the days we were out and about and we were seeing everybody para, uh, paraglide. And so that's where you jump off of a mountain with the parachute, right? And so um, it different, so similar to hang gliding, but with a parachute, but not necessarily, but not the one from the boat, just to kind of create that differentiation. Um, so we were paragliding, and, or people were, and we couldn't do it because it was windy. And so uh, everybody was kind of bummed about it, but I'm like determined, I want to make this happen. And so I went up, took it upon myself to get a hold of an organization that that could help in this paragliding process, and. Uh, uh, and found one and just kind of naively expected uh, like a magical rainbow bus of a bunch of tourists in, in, in Hawaiian shirts to roll up, like playing some music and be like, Brandy, come on board. And it just wasn't that. I was sitting outside of this kind of apartment area that we were at, this downtown area. And this dude in like a Land Cruiser like pulls up and whistles. And he's like, Brandy, Brandy, come on. And I just was like, yeah, exactly. That's a perfect whistle. It's exactly how it was. And I just went oh, like, I mean, I feel like my parents taught me not to get in <laughs> Land Cruisers with strange men. Um, and I, I just, so I did, I got, I got in the vehicle naturally. And then I went, um, on to the place where, uh, we had to sign the, the waiver and the waivers were translated into really broken English. And, and again, some of you may have heard me <laughs> share the story, but it's, but it's all process of, of stepping outside of myself. And it was interesting the way the evolution occurred, but I go to sign the waiver and in the broken English, it essentially read like, if you die, not our fault. I mean, it was really, really rough. And so I thought brilliantly, well, I'll sign someone else's name. Right. Because that makes so much sense that that because then it will be their fault. <laughs> no, obviously. Right. Totally, totally their fault. And so, um, yeah, not not smart, because if I had died, I don't know what anybody would have done to find me. There would have been like a hard, hard, much harder tracking. But nonetheless, I, I, I forged this this thing and I hopped back in his Land Cruiser and we're heading up the hill to do this. And I'm starting to get like really worked up and nervous um, over this this paragliding because, again, I'm alone with this dude. And, the, and, and Portuguese is a language that is uh, pretty far out for for my understanding and, and exposure. And and I'm, I'm thinking about what have I got myself into and and can I tuck and roll out of this Land Cruiser going 40 miles an hour and you know what do I do you know, like all these things are running through my head and uh, then there's some traffic and then the day goes on and then we get up there and all these things are starting to add to the fact that I've been scared for so long that I'm starting to get almost impatient and for anybody that's listening you're thinking to yourself me impatient that can never happen right wow I mean it's totally totally shocking but so I got really really impatient and then the wind had to be so perfect and I'm like does the wind it really have to be perfect people with parachutes I mean, come on. And so by the end of it, I was like, let's do this darn thing. And it was so um, interesting to see myself kind of go through that evolution of fear in, in travel. But then we go and we run and jump off of this uh, mountain and kind of he goes, all you have to do is just keep running, even if you're in the air. And I'm like, OK, kind of running my feet in the air. And it took off. And one of the things uh, this was in 2003. I know it's a very, really long time ago. One of the things that he said, even in 2003, of course, we didn't really have cell phones or anything like that, that, uh, that were a problem, but I did have a camera and he wouldn't let me, uh, take any pictures or do anything in that process. And I was, <laughs> I was really thankful for that though, because it forced me to look around and it forced me to look up and enjoy the moment and to, to feel my fear and to feel, you know, my excitement and energy and all of that. And we cried crashed horribly onto the beach, but it was one of the best crashes ever. And I think that in that process of that, I really found myself and I found a lot of me that I didn't know was there in my evolution of fear. And of course, you've seen a very firsthand uh, uh, next level of that with uh, our disruption podcast with Shauna. Um, that's uh, yeah, like next level kind of thing. But nonetheless, travel, if I hadn't have been there, if I hadn't been in another country, all of those different components allowed me to have that experience. Um, so I really want to dig into how travel can have this. What does that mean? Uh, a lot of experts like Dr. Wanda Krauss has, has talked about transformational leadership and how travel helps with that and how it, it, it really can broaden people to be more curious and to take risks and to be adaptable and resilient. And I really want to talk to a subject matter expert about what they think and how travel has impacted their life. So I'd like to use this opportunity now to introduce you to Mario Vega. Now, this individual I met in Kenya, Africa last year 
absolutely uh, beautiful soul. He's a risk and audit manager for Guadalupe Credit Union. He has a bachelor's in business from New, New Mexico State University. He's also a DE, so shout out to our DE friends. And he's a travel aficionado for sure. He has been around the block. And so I'd like to now please please join me in welcoming Mr. Mario Vega. Hello, Mario. Hello, Brandy. How are it's a you? Pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me here. So uh, we did first lay eyes on each other in Africa, right? In Kenya, in, yes. in, in Nairobi. Yes. That's so cool. I didn't know what I got myself into. and Both with, with Africa as well as me, right? <laughs> right, yeah. I, uh, I, I, especially that I forgot to take the malaria pills. I was like, eh, I won't worry about those. I remember us having that conversation, actually. Um, you're like, nah, I just I opted out of the malaria. I'm like, what do you, who opts out of, <laughs> of malaria? Yeah, I'm like, I'll be fine. I'll be all right. <laughs> Uh -huh. So when it comes to how did you, you know, get your travel bug? When did that start? How did it start? Well, I, I think as far as it goes back to when I was a kid, um, I always had the curiosity and love for planes. So um, in my mind, it always seemed like futuristic. So this was like in the early 90s. Um, um, most of the countries that I knew of were mostly countries that I had heard of from TVs or from news or um, just places that were just far away. Um, the other thing, too, is I remember um, in class, like even in fifth grade, when they would tell us to write about, you know, about yourself and what did you want to do when you grow up. And I remember always talking about like, oh, I want to travel the world when I grow up. Wow. And um I think this travel bug, I mean, that was the root of it. I mean, I didn't really travel then. I didn't have mm -hmm. the opportunity as a kid. But um, when I met a friend in high school and she was, uh, she's Russian and um, she invited me. She's like, hey, you know, my family wants to meet you. You should come to Russia for a summer. And that was my first actual overseas international no, trip. No, it was not. Month. Russia? I was that, after that, I was like, oh my God, this is it. I can't, Russia was your first time abroad? It was. Russia was my first time abroad. And let me tell you, it was an experience. It was, it was a good experience and I had some bad experiences. And it also made me grow as well as in my travels and understanding certain things about traveling. Wow. Now, um, we, we may have some Russian uh, listeners here and they probably feel the same way if, if America was their first travel experience uh, as well. But I've been to Russia and it is far out and different and, and crazy. But to be the first, to be somebody that grows up, you know, primarily in the U.S. and then to go to Russia for the first, I mean, no Canada. Like you didn't just roll down to Tijuana for, for a weekend. No, you went to Russia. Right, right, wow, that's insane. Right. So what's the most important thing that you've learned in your journeys um as far as the most important things i would probably say learning about yourself um you actually don't realize how much you don't know about yourself until you travel alone and then spend so much time alone exploring new places um a lot of my travels i've actually done alone um Have you? i think it has helped me grow as an adult um, as a human being experiencing different cultures and different people it definitely opens your mind. Every time I travel to a country that anyone rarely travels to, like, for example, you know, you hear these places that nobody goes to. I always think of them as like the hidden gems, forgotten gems. Um, sometimes we just get caught up in our daily routine and we don't realize that there's a whole world out there for, you know, for us to see. Yeah. And so often people will be born, raised, die in the same place that they, that they are and are just never exposed to anything beyond that. Yeah. And, you know, the thing about this, Brandy, is um, it's in every part of the world. Um, I studied abroad in Spain for two years. And when I was there, I lived in Sevilla, uh, actually one year. And then the other year, I just thought I was going to live there forever until reality kicked in. <laughs> I was 21 at the time, 22. Um, but there was people there in villages that, you know, they're like, oh, I've only been to Madrid, which is, you know, the major city in Spain. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, you know, you live in Europe and You've never been out of Spain. Like the farthest they've been was Madrid from Sevilla, which is like a two hour train ride on the bullet train or, you know, mm -hmm. an hour flight. And that was the the farthest. And even here in the States where I live in New Mexico, people that have only been to Denver, Phoenix. So, I mean, it's everywhere in the world. It's mm -hmm. I mean, it can be I mean, it's sure. a little more, more difficult for developing countries. But I mean, even in a lot of these developed countries, you see a lot of people that have just never stepped out of their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are some of your travel tips? 
What are some of the things that, um, that you all, what are your go-tos? Well, one of the things that um, I definitely is don't overthink the traveling. Um, I think the more you think about it, the more you worry. Like, don't worry about become... malaria pills. I mean, right? I'm just I going so. to <laughs> Kenya. <laughs> I think so. I'm like, uh, you know, I'm not going to worry about those. Um <laughs> Because when you start thinking about this, I mean, you start setting yourself setbacks and then you start worrying and what if this happens? And um, it's just, I mean, I just feel like it's so, easy to take the easy steps. So everyone has the ability to do something big, such as traveling. Mm -hmm. um, the way that I always say is start small. So like if you if you are feel a little uncomfortable, I would start slow, like maybe go to Spain, maybe, maybe go to the UK, maybe mm -hmm. go to France, you know, more developed countries. So when you get there, you know, you feel you don't feel as, as scared or out of your comfort zone. So it's like easy steps to take for traveling. Then you can step it up and then go to more developed countries or other right. places that, you know, you never thought you would ever actually make it to. Well, that's a really, that's a good point. So if people have the capacity to be able to go abroad and say they're from the United States, the, I, I agree with you, the best places to go are first places that speak English or whatever language that, that you speak, right? So yeah. it, it, whether it's Australia or Canada, those are easy ones. They're Western culture, English speaking, Western, yeah. you know, United Kingdom. And then if you can to other developing countries that maybe have different language, so that's kind of a next level, different language, but still are Western culture. And then yes. when you start going into uh, different languages where they don't speak as much English in the country and then different uh, alphabets, like Greece or anywhere in Asia or, you know, those kinds that, that takes it up a different level. Cause then you can't read maps or anything. Right. And then, yeah. And, and then the culture then thing. That's when it's totally. And then that's when you become a little more, if you have the experience, you're just like, Oh, I got this. I think I can do this. And right. um, I've done this before. And surprisingly, you know, even in developed countries and developing countries, I mean, you come across, There'll always be someone that will speak English. I yeah. think, you know, the United States is, um, I mean, we focus on just, you know, just the one language, but anywhere else in the world, I mean, you find people, I mean, even that lack the education that speak multiple language and you're just so shocked. You're like, wow, you know, I just met this kid in Cambodia and he can speak three languages. I'm like, wow, where did you learn that? And yeah, you know, it's, it's amazing. It is amazing. So I started to ask you before the podcast and now I want to officially ask you, how many countries have you been to? 34 different countries, 34, <gasps> 30, yeah, 34 different countries. Yeah. Oh. So, and I mean, I feel like it's, it's going to keep going and going. And yeah. Going. <laughs> the pace that you're going, is going to be continue to expand. And so I'm right with you. I'm, and, uh, and the fact that you, first of all, started with saying that you grew up in the nineties. I, I know that you, <laughs> that, that I now know that you, I have some years on you, which made me like, you know, sweat a little bit. Uh, I, uh, the, I am also about the same, I think maybe like 36, 37 or so. And it's hard, you know, like, of course that includes Liechtenstein and the Vatican. And I'm going to include every single country that, that, that is actually there, mm -hmm. but true. And, and the Vatican is even its own country. Yeah, so exactly. It, so it does count. <laughs> it's on my list yeah. anyway. Um, that's so cool. What, uh, so where's the craziest place you've ever been? Craziest. Well, I mean, as far as crazy as I would probably say, because of the day that I arrived, what was happening. And, um, I would probably say this was in, um, in Thailand. This was mm -hmm. in Phuket, Thailand. Wow. So when I arrived in Phuket, this was in April. This was in 2016. And it was the celebration of the new year. And the way that they celebrate the new year, it's called Songkram. Songkram? I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but Songkram. Um, and it's basically the beginning of the rainy season in April. So when I arrived there, it was like people were telling me, you just arrived for this huge uh, festivity of the water festival for New Year's. I'm like, well, what is it about? So it's basically everyone out on the street throwing water at each other and just having fun. And the streets are very lively. Um, everyone is out having fun. The bars are full. And it was just so crazy because, I mean, I remember just seeing I remember just seeing um, all these people and everyone just having fun. And it was like you could go to a bar and then just dump a bucket of water on someone even if when they're having their drink and it was all fun and stuff i was like wow 
<laughs> this is such a crazy event. Well, let me tell you, the next day was even crazier when you come across all these people passed out on the beach, people on the, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, it was insane. Wow. It was like, wow. It was, uh, it was like the hangover, except yeah, it was kind of like the hangover, the, you know, the second one where they go. And just go separate. And I couldn't imagine getting right off the plane to that too. And that's one of the things that I always do when I go to different countries is I try to at least have some place to go right off the plane. Like I want to know exactly how to get to my first place because that's usually the most overwhelming time is when you first are exposed to the new country. And then from there, you can kind of loosen up and get into it and, you know, get a little bit more comfortable or adaptive and then figure your way out. But when you first step off the plane to step right into (laughs) something like that would be would be intense. I'm going to Thailand this summer, actually. So oh that's, my God, you're you are gonna love it. You are gonna. So love I'm it. hoping it's, to have a bit of a hangover experience. Less, I'm, I'm sure you will. <laughs> we won't talk about which details uh, go into that. So, what are some things that are that you dislike the most when it comes to travel rookies? So, I'm sure in your travels you've seen people that uh, are rookies, and it's I can sniff them and see them from miles away, and I'm sure you can as well. What are some things that you bug you about the travel rookie? Yes, the travel rookie. Oh. <laughs> Well, I mean, I I think the number one thing that just is very hard is when someone is, um, with my experience, you know, I had actually a friend that, um, and we kind of lost touch, but um, we had a friend, I had a friend and um, seemed very outgoing, very open-minded and in the perspective of being here. And then I just decided to throw, you know, the idea, like, let's go on a trip. And I guess you don't really know somebody until you travel with them. That's one of the things they say, and mm-hmm. especially international. But um, he was just very close minded as far as being afraid to eat the food, mm-hmm. as far as to get on, you know, certain things or do explore, you know, explore thing um, ideas or he would never bring in his ideas to as far as things to do mm-hmm. or wanting to get on a little boat on a river cruise or something because afraid of the water was going to splash and he might get sick. Oh, and afraid to try the food. So that was a little like over, like a little frustrating for me. So, mm-hmm. and I've come across that actually with some people, but you know, some people actually, the thing is like, you got, you got to make them comfortable. Some people will get right. comfortable after mm-hmm. a certain time and some right. people just won't like, they're just like, this is just not for me. And I made a mistake and maybe, you know, I, I, this was just not for me. Right. Yeah. So I think you're right. So the biggest thing is people being open-minded. So coming into it yes. and it's because I'm happy to help somebody that it's their first time to give them any sort of support that they want, love, look out for them, you know, take them under my wing. I'm happy to do any of that and would be here for anybody that it is a rookie. But if they come into it whining, or they come into it complaining or, or unwilling to try, then it's like, eh. Yes. And then at that point, then you just feel responsible for the person. And I mean, it just makes or you just the trip them. a little difficult for the both of you. <laughs> um, and and like, uh, well. tell me, what about packing? Are you an expert packer or are you an overpacker? You know what? I, I would say I'm not so much of an expert packer because I'm just like, Okay, so I pack like literally before the trip. So there's been times where my flight has been at six in the morning and here I am packing at two thirty three in the morning. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so that but um, oh, I'm like the I have not gotten anywhere and then where I've said, Oh, I forgot this. Like for some reason it just Except comes malaria natural. pills. Yeah. Just... Yeah, well at that point I already knew, but I was like, you know what? I'm not even gonna worry about it. Right. I'm like I just like eh. Right. I, uh, I'm like the uh, super packer. So I, I remember going to, uh, China and I went for a couple weeks and I had just a carry on cause I just, I wanted to be able to carry it on and didn't want to lose my bag going to China. And I knew that it'd be so different culturally that I didn't have to worry about having to buy things or anything like that. So I just carried on piece of cake. Two weeks is not that, you know, and there yeah. were people that brought suitcases upon suitcases. I'm like, first of all, you have to carry all of that. And secondly, yes. like what it could possibly be in these suitcases, you know what I mean? So it just, Yes. Sometimes when people overpack, I just like looking like, ah. Yeah. See, and that's that's one thing I, that I don't do. I, I, I don't think I ever feel like I overpack. And usually when I go on a trip, like this last trip, I went to Scandinavia and I went with my partner, Drew. And I felt like maybe I was a little overpacked. And the reason was because I just, you know, felt like, well, we're going to be, you know, driving around and, mm-hmm. um, I felt more comfortable that I wasn't going to be carrying this stuff all right, around right. rather than when I'm by myself, I'm like, Good okay, I'm going to be by myself and I'm going to be carrying all this stuff. I'm not going to have a car. So usually what I do is I take those big, huge you know, backpack. backpacks and then I just roll my clothes and 
when I roll it, I just stuff it in there and then it, everything just fits in there and it's perfectly because then everything's all in my back. That's so what advice do you have for people wanting to explore? What's an action or a takeaway? Um, well, I mean, what I hear from a lot of older people, they're like, you're doing the right thing. Do it now. Because that is one of the biggest regrets that I have is I've always wanted to travel. And now that I'm older, it's just not the same as when, if I would have done it at your age. So that is definitely one of the things to do is to do it now. Um, also, you don't realize how educational and so much that you learn from traveling. You learn so much about yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the reward of traveling is just something hard to explain of just because of how it makes how it makes you feel and how it just opens your mind. And it makes you realize that, wow, you know, there's so much out there in the world. It's, it's so hard to explain. One of the countries that ever did that to me was New Zealand. Like I came back from that place and I was like. I was like changed. I know it sounds very dramatic, but wow. it's true. Everyone even noticed. They're like, wow, after this trip, I was like, you've been so different. You've been, you've changed, but you know, spending so much time by yourself, that's yep. the biggest reward. You get to learn so much about yourself and you know, you're able to realize when you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing, but at the same time, you are aware of your own, mm -hmm. I guess you would call it BS mm -hmm. and then you can call yourself out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're aware of you. I'll say it. You're aware of your own bullshit and you're aware of your own weaknesses, but you're also having to rely True. on yourself and, uh, yeah. and there's no one else to have your back, but you, and that's a powerful thing in those, some of those moments is just having to figure it out to be near tears in an overwhelming situation, <clears throat> but having to go, Hey, the only person that's getting me through this right now is me. So, just, just yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you had mentioned previously, Brandy, about another uh, of the travel tips. And another one that I had mm -hmm. was um, a lot of people exchange money at the at the exchange rates, you know, um, cash places. And usually you get charged so many fees with that. And I've always told people this, the best rates you get at the ATM. Mm -hmm. The one thing is you got to notify, hopefully, your credit union and not a bank mm -hmm. because the credit union will be at the most three dollar fee. And banks, you'll rank up to twenty dollars fees, and I've I've had that from my past experiences. But you notify your credit union, you take out the money at the ATM, you will get the best exchange rates, and then you will save that commission fee that you usually pay at the exchange. So that's the best thing to do. And all the countries I've ever been to, I have not had a problem where I've just been like I can't take money out of the ATM. Like I've been able to. I mean, it goes from Cambodia to Thailand to Kenya, which you know are far more developing nations. Awesome. That's a perfect uh, takeaway. How can people get a hold of you if they want to learn more? Um, I do have my email, uh, MarioVGA at gmail.com. Um, you can send me a message on Facebook. I'm under Mario Vega Mendoza. I added a, the additional last name. It's <laughs> a Mexican Hispanic thing. Um, and um, also I have my Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram at Mario N Y D V. That's Mario N why D is in dog and then V is in Victor. And, uh, you can see all my, uh, usually whenever I travel somewhere, I post a picture of that place. I try mm -hmm. to not overwhelm my Instagram, but I'm more of like thinking of what place really captured me yeah. at that city. So then I take a picture of that and then that one goes on my Instagram. Love it. Facebook. I mean, on my Facebook, I have tons of albums. I have every single album of my travels. So, I mean, they're all sorted by different countries that I visited throughout my life. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing your experience with us today, Mario. I appreciate it. It's great to see me, you. And it was good to see you. Thank I'll talk you. to you very soon. Bye. Bye. Hi, I am the sheriff. We are now in Budapest. I'm listening to Randy on Hot Box. Thank you to our shout out from Budapest. Is thank you to Mario as well. I love being able to have the global perspective here on the Strategic Hop Box. Here's your top five kick ass. Number one, when it comes to travel, sharpen that travel IQ. Do some research, know what you're doing, understand, watch, listen to the people that are around. That's the best part about getting to know and understanding. Also, listen to yourself.
Number two is embrace the inspiration. Open your eyes, feel, listen to the music, smell the smells, be a part of the culture that you're in. Like I said, trying to try to get lost a little. Number three is appreciate that diversity. Sometimes it, the appreciating the diversity allows you to appreciate where you are at home and have a different contextual alignment about who you are and where you are. Number four is push beyond that comfort zone. So if you don't have the means to travel outside of your country, then push beyond your city, push beyond anywhere that you can, whatever that comfort zone is, we urge you to push. And number five is create a global community. Whether you meet somebody in Africa and they become your friend and here on the hunt box or meet people all over the world, it's important to stay in touch, create those connections. That's part of travel, create a community. There's your top five kick ass. Thank you again to Mario and all of our Hotbox homies for being here and sending shout outs. Until next time, get out there and see the world and then kick some ass. Mm -hmm.